In this course, we're going to go over building a RESTful API with Flask. But before doing that, I think it's a good idea to go over the basics of APIs in general. This will make sure we're on the same page when it comes to terminology. Speaking of terminology, API stands for Application Programming Interface. Simply put, it's how people or machines interact with your program. When most people talk about APIs, we think about web APIs, but APIs do exist at a much lower level too. Every class or library you create or use has its own API. It's how you use that library. For example, Flask itself has its own API. The author of Flask decided to name the library Flask, and when you instantiate an instance of Flask, one of those methods available is route. In fact, there's a whole API section in the documentation where you can discover all of the public classes, methods, and functions that Flask exposes publicly. All of this together helps you figure out how to interface with the Flask library. You could say it's the contract between the Flask library and your code. As long as you call the correct methods with the correct arguments, Flask guarantees to return back the results it promises, and you can discover all of that by looking over the API documentation. So that covers APIs in the context of individual libraries, and web APIs are really no different. Instead of dealing with classes and methods, you're dealing with URL endpoints and HTTP verbs such as get, post, put, and delete. For example, in the main build a SaaS app with Flask course, we interface with Stripe's API to accept credit card payments and deal with subscriptions. Stripe's API is really, really good. I, along with most developers, love Stripe because the documentation is top-notch and it follows certain design patterns that make it predictable. In this case, the Stripe API is based on the REST design pattern, which is becoming one of the most popular ways to design an API. When we build our own API, we'll also use the same pattern. But in our case, we won't be building a public API that other people will use. Instead, we're building an internal API that our own application uses, but with a bit of elbow grease, you could make your own public API with what you learn in this course, and I will point you to a few resources on how to do that if you want. Anyways, let's talk a bit about RESTful APIs. At the end of the day, they are still an API. What makes them special are the rules they adhere to. The biggest component is having a unified way to access your resources. A resource could be thought of as your models or business logic. For example, a user or blog post would be considered resources. If you were designing a RESTful API, you would set up your URL endpoints and HTTP methods to have a predictable pattern for performing various create, read, update, and delete actions on those resources, and that's commonly known as CRUD. Here's a little chart that goes over the seven main RESTful URL endpoints and their corresponding HTTP verbs in relation to blog posts. If you wanted to view a list of blog posts, you would go to slash posts using a GET request, and you would expect to see a list of blog posts. If you wanted to render a form to create a new blog post, then you would go to slash posts slash new with a GET request. Keep in mind, that's just rendering the form itself, not creating the post. When it comes time to creating a new post, you would send a post request to the post URL. This is different than listing all posts because we're sending a post request instead of get. Next up, if you wanted to display a specific blog post, you could just go to slash post slash ID with a get request. What you use as an identifier isn't important. It could be a database ID or a slug, which would be the title of the blog post using URL safe characters. Then if you wanted to edit a blog post, you would just go to the slash post slash ID slash edit URL with a get request. That would render a form to allow you to edit the post. When it comes time to submitting that form, you would set a put or patch request to slash post slash ID. There's a subtle difference between put and patch, and that's not important right now. We'll go over that later on in the course. Lastly, if you wanted to delete a post, you would just send a delete request to slash post slash ID. These seven endpoint combinations are very powerful because you could apply this exact same pattern to just about anything. If you are dealing with a photos resource instead of posts, the same exact pattern can be used. You would just end up going to slash photos instead of posts. 
If you are building a movie listing site, then you might replace photos with movies, and it all works. You get the idea. Stripe uses this format for most of its resources. As you can see, they have a ton of different resources. But now that you know what the RESTful pattern is, you sort of know how they all work without even looking. If you take a look here at the customer's resource, we can see that we can create a customer, retrieve a single customer, update a customer, delete a customer, or list all customers. That's the RESTful API design in practice. Developers prefer to build and use RESTful APIs because as you probably guessed, this pattern is predictable. It makes you feel at home because knowledge you gain from using one API could be applied to the next. When we build our own API, we'll use this pattern whenever possible. I say whenever possible because sometimes it's okay to add non-RESTful endpoints to your API. For example, if you wanted to delete a bunch of blog posts at once, you may consider adding a bulk delete endpoint to your post resource. How you implement that is up to you, but it doesn't really fit the mold of the seven standard endpoints that define a RESTful API. Perhaps you could send a delete request to slash post slash bulk delete, and then pass in a list of IDs. So now you know what an API is and are comfortable with the RESTful design pattern, let's visualize how our application will be architected and also go over some of the technologies and libraries used to build our API. For that, I'll see you in the next video.